See, I got, I get nervous when she, okay. Anyway, we'll wait a few minutes for people to log on and hopefully I'll be able to see if she pops on. So I don't want to talk about it without her. So we'll talk about, I'll be able to see if she pops on. Wait, so you're doing that? Oh, okay. All right. We're live. Good evening, everyone. It is, uh, I don't even know what night is it. What is it, Thursday? Thursday? Yes. Thursday night. Thursday, September 1st. September 1st. Wow, we're in September, John. Uh, start, it's starting to cool, cool off a little bit. The humidity's starting to break. I love it. <laughs> I, I noticed a new shirt, John. I'm used to the one that you wear for our, your, our normal lives. So that's, no, it's that's college what, no, this is this is the summer. <laughs> the I, yeah, the, the winter ones haven't come out yet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me explain. I know you guys are here for the Hanover haunting with Deanna Simpson and of course the legendary John Zaff is uh, Deanna is not on yet. I don't know why she hasn't joined us yet. So if Deanna doesn't log on, we will just talk to our friend John Zaff is here and we will, I guess, reschedule the Hanover haunting for another night. I mean, John knows enough about that case, but wait a yeah. minute. I'm hearing chimes. Are this, is this stranger things? That's my new clock, man. I love that clock. I love that. Uh -oh. clock. I haven't watched it. We won't get into that, but I'm in the middle of that season. So don't ruin it. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we will talk to John Zaffis because we all know that John Zaffis has done it all, seen it all. And heard and it all. <laughs> We were just talking about a subject before we went on live that maybe we could revisit. No. 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 <laughs> I anyway, know where you live. Uh, I know. And I know where you live now, sir. I know. Uh, anyway, um, again, John Zappis, if you don't know who John Zappis is, I don't know what rock you've been under, but John Zappis has been in the field for what, 50 years? Was that the anniversary? Yes, it was. It's past the, uh, the, well, the month of August. I uh, hit my 50 year mark wow. when, you know, again, because everybody thinks that it was uh, the time framing just when I had seen the apparition of my grandfather. But, you know, prior to that, you know, again, being a kid, you'd, we had one of the most notorious known hauntings in the world called Phelps Mansion in Stratford, Connecticut. Really? I mean, oh, gosh, people came in from all over the world to investigate it. And, um, you know, it was abandoned. You know, at that time frame, me and my two buddies went down there on our bikes. and We were in there for hours and hours. And we'd hear all kinds of crazy noises. We were running out, you know, screaming and hollering. But the funny thing was a few of the different sounds that I heard back in that day, I can relate sometimes when they happen on cases. Because I always kept saying, ah, it was just animals or, you know, uh, it could have been absolutely anything in this house. But the story goes in the late 1800s that a minister lived there with his family and that there was a poltergeist, uh, you know, situation that broke out in the house. They would see hooded figures, Bibles would be opened up. If you ever get an opportunity, look it up. It's a phenomenal story. So how did you get involved? It, it, it wasn't even 10 minutes away from my house. Oh. So, I mean, it was just a very well-known haunted house, you know, in, in the area. So, again, you know, it was abandoned at that point in time. They had, it, they turned it into a nursing home. They closed it down. I kind of still wish it was there because, man, that would have made a dynamite place for the museum. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it was a, a huge mansion. It had four big pillars in front of it and everything. So anyways, but uh, it had quite the reputation back in the late 1800s. Like I said, people came in from all over the world to investigate it. Very really? well. Documented. Yes. I've yeah. never heard of it. Yeah. Nobody really talks about it that much anymore today because it's, you know, again, but um, it's He's just. He's still a pup, John. He's a pup. <laughs> yeah, but, but, you know, here, here's the thing, too. Again, it, it's funny because when it comes to, like, highly publicized cases people only think of the movies you know what yeah. i mean that's all yes. they know the yeah. mainstream paranormal people amityville conjuring all this other stuff yeah. and like you said there were other cases that they never made movies out of that like you mentioned were high profile very oh, yeah. well known yeah. cases but there was no internet there was no nothing you know, social media, social yeah, like media. You said, so the yeah. community knew about it and maybe the news would pick it up and it would go on the AP, but 
But if it was, if you weren't time. local to the news, you were unaware, yeah. unless it hit the international news, which is rare. So what were you and your team just going in that building when it was abandoned, or were there people? Oh, I wasn't. I, well, I didn't even really have a team or anything. I was fifteen, like fifteen, give or uh, take a little bit. There, it was me and two of my buddies. And like I said, it was abandoned, it was all broken into and everything. And we were just hanging out in there for several hours to see if we can, you know, see anything. <laughs> because one of the stories was that, you know, one of the spirits would come down the staircase and the staircase, uh, the railing and everything was taken from a ship, a clipper ship. It's died, it, it was oh, wow. built into, yeah. So it, it was, it's, if you, like I said, if you ever get an opportunity, you look it up, it's such a unique uh uh, story to the whole case, but um, I have a brick after they tore it down that somebody had given me. They had taken it off the property, and I actually have two cheers that are allegedly from the Phelps Mansion down in the museum. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, two little small red cheer, velvet cheers that are downstairs. So, again, yes. it's, it's interesting to have things like that, so. But that's, again, at 15, you were doing that, which I think, again, is pretty cool. But again, you know, you grew up in that environment, so that mm -hmm. wasn't real strange for you to be doing. But, you know, your museum, I saw that Cody and Satori visited the museum yeah. recently. Yeah. And they're just kind of starting out on their haunted object journey. Yeah. And how, how was that whole experience with them? I mean, they're good people. I know you've known them forever. Well, her I knew before she was born, so. <laughs> but they've never been over, right? They've never been inside no, the museum. No, no, it was that that was uh, the first time, and they were working on a um, a small project for uh, the Michigan uh, presentation on the rapping tapping that they do, oh, you know, okay. and the sound effects and everything. So uh, that's what I was helping them out with and everything, and uh, we we're going back and forth and everything. And I know Centauri when she walked into the upper level and I said, I told you, it looks like something out of hoarders in here. And <laughs> she said, I guess it does. And I go, yeah, things are just piled up all over the place. So I, I think people are really surprised me being one of them, because every time I mention that we've been in there, people go like, what did you see? And I'll say, what didn't you see? Yeah, exactly. I'm like <laughs> from Winnie the Pooh to like the scariest death mask. I'm like, it runs the gambit of newer things, older things. Yeah. Things you would never expect and things you would expect. It's mm -hmm. just all there, you yeah. know? Are, yeah. are you still actively looking for a location or have you? Yeah, I have I actually looked at a couple of other pieces of property and I didn't like where the area was because uh. it, they were too low and we all know how the flooding is happening. So, you know, one of them was a very, very good price, but it was in a flooding zone and I went, it's going to defeat the purpose, and that's why the property was so reasonable. Got it. Yeah. So, yeah, there's so many things you, you have to look at when, you know, trying to figure out whether you could get a you know piece of property and uh, being able to set up. But I will continue looking. Sooner or later, I'll find out one perfect piece of property that I can afford. What is your perfect scenario as far as the museum? Are you looking to do like a Zach Baggins deal where people are going to pay to get in and tours and all that stuff? Or like, what is your idea? I don't know that I would structure it. I mean, you know, the way he has it structured, right. you know, uh, again, that it's, it's, that's the number one attraction out there in Las Vegas. Yep. You know, the way he's got it set up and everything. It's pretty cool. Um, actually when I was out there, I was supposed to be able to go, uh, one of the people I was at a conference with, but it just didn't work out. Didn't happen. Okay. I was curious. I was curious to see it, <laughs> but <clears throat> No, I, I don't know exactly how I would structure it, John, or how I would uh, do it, but I think it would only be, you know, by appointment only. I wouldn't have it opened all the time. You know, I would just do it and set time framings to uh, do that. Naturally, you're going to have to charge just to keep it up. Of course. So, yeah, yeah you wouldn't be able to go around now, it. Now, what is your opinion on something like that? I know for you, the objects have come to you or mm -hmm. you've gotten them on cases. Mm -hmm. Would you ever consider acquiring items, paying for them the way Zach does, or you would never even consider that? Wouldn't have the money for it. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you did, would that be something that... There, there is one item downstairs. It's an old pump organ that I did pay for. Okay. Okay, and the reason I did was this man that purchased them, and he would restore them, 
you know, he, he bought this one and everything. And I felt so bad for him because it was a small business and a hobby for him. Uh, and it was almost going to put him belly up. Right. So I actually gave him some money for it, which he was happy for. And I laughed and I went, I've never bought a haunted item. I said, but, you know, when people say that to me and I go, yeah, no, I kind of did. So there, there is an item down there that I did actually literally purchase. But it was a compassionate purchase. Yeah, yes, it was By so way, that it didn't, yeah, it didn't ruin his hobby. Just as a, as a sub uh, thing here, I don't think you could say pump organ on a family oriented <laughs> life thing like we run here. Oh so let's stop that talk, John Zaffis. Before Chris, we Chris, Chris I did, usually <laughs> I'm the one that thinks of this stuff and I didn't even think of it. You that said time. it. I just had to edit you and, and let you know that that kind of talk will not be tolerated. And so you think he forward. curbs me, but he doesn't curb himself, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, if you have a choke, a chicken that you choke down there somewhere, I don't want to hear about that either. Just, no. just to stop. There. I got this guy good. They had me. I went into the dunk tank at the the bash, but I didn't go as myself. And this guy didn't even recognize me or know who I was. Say, she's mental. We all know that. But but again, <laughs> along those same lines, if you had the money and something that you knew that was inside whatever was a known haunted object, you would buy it. Depends on what it is, John. If it, if it, it struck it, you for whatever it, reason. I guess, or, you know, okay, um, let's say if um, an item or something came up from Amityville right. and the opportunity was there, I would have to consider that. Okay. Yeah. Now, I have a few items from Amityville. You know, uh, when they were doing restoration work, uh, Carpenter had taken a whole bunch of the shingles and nails and stuff like that. And um, a good friend of mine had some of them, and she gave them to me. Nice. And there's a few a few other things that are floating around from there from uh, George that George had handed to me, George Lutz. So, you know, just a little item, you know, nothing uh, substantial or anything. But I, I just always thought that you were, again, the guy who everything came to you or you got through cases. I didn't think you would really go outside that and actively look for haunted items that you would purchase. No, would I, would I do something like that? No. Okay. Um, yeah. Something else I would consider, you know, uh, old funeral home things like the real old casket or something. Oh yeah. You know, okay. Something like that because, but I wouldn't put that as a haunted item, but right. you know, to purchase something like that, I, you know, I might consider something like that. Yeah. yeah. I'm hoping the museum that you are able to find a place eventually. And, and yeah. really, because what you have is, again, you wouldn't know it by looking on the outside of your house and, and where, but you go in there and yeah, it does look like a hoarder thing. There's a lot of stuff, <laughs> but there is a kind of like method to the madness when you go around the museum and you see what you see. Yeah. It's like, you look around sense. and everywhere is something that catches from, your eye. Like you said, from something dark and then yeah. something light. Yeah. Um, yeah. This was a good question. Nor wants to know if you have anything from a serial killer. Oh. Um, uh, there's a chain from, um, what the heck was that? Do uh, Dober? Dauber? Dauber. Dauber. There was a necklace chain. And I completely, you know, I forgot about it. You just brought it up that some girl had and she kept it and she was getting creeped out thinking there was something with that. I'm almost 100% positive it was Dabber. The only way I'm going to actually remember is when I start opening those thousands of boxes out there and look at the letter because usually people leave the letter, you know, send the letter in with oh. the item. So that's why I don't open a lot of the boxes. I limb close because the letter and the item's right in there. Someone so that said be, Dahmer. Yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer. 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 So yeah. besides all the stuff that we saw that's open and on the shelves, there are more boxes that with, with stuff know. in it? Really? Yeah. But there was there oh was a Dahmer who was a serial killer too. Yeah. Oh, we didn't we didn't I didn't even know about that. Is that somewhere in the back of the museum? No, it's in a box somewhere. Yeah, you know, it's with one of my boxes in there. He's wow. got a lot, guys. I mean yeah, I, I, I and you you saw that me. pile of boxes. That's that room is twelve by twelve, twelve by eighteen, and it's filled from the floor to the ceiling with boxes. Yeah. So, and again, you know, there are don't get me wrong, there are some Halloween decoration, 
you know, the animation people that I have that are uh, mixed in there. But be surprised the amount of stuff in there that's just from cases. Wow. I'm sure yeah. half of it is probably Christmas stuff, too, that uh, from what I've seen. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful, the display they have, but uh, there's a lot. It looks like it takes a lot to put the that stuff up. The yeah. beautiful nutcrackers. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, TV. We always talk about TV. Anything, any discussions, any conversations at all? Uh, yeah, always a few things brewing. You know, you he never always, know. He always knows what's going on. Every time I call and we talk about... <laughs> What projects. you're not supposed to repeat our conversations? Well, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying you're, you're in the know. That that's what I'm saying. You're, you kind of have your your finger on the pulse. Yeah, he, he went over that. Somebody asked, "Are your items blessed and protected?" Yes, everything has bindings and prayers and different things that are done around them uh, to help either neutralize the energy or conceal the energy. Now that's just a practice, right? Do you ever? We never talked about this either. Um, do you ever initially open a box and get a, a feeling or a vibe? Or you don't really have that. You just kind of approach it like people said there's an attachment or something going on with this. Let me go through my process and store it. Uh, no, the majority of the time, if I'm doing something or an item comes in, I do not open it inside the house. I, normally, if I'm doing it and opening it, I'll put it out on the back deck. Yes, okay. are there sometimes I'll open something and go, man, this is, this is just creepy. You know, you could get a vibe to it. Then there'll be other things where I'll be just like, I don't even know if this is really haunted or not. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you just don't really always know. But regardless, either way, I do what I need to do with it. See, I believe in a lot of the old ways also, too, John. I believe uh, leaving things out in the sun and out in the bright light can help to neutralize energy also, too. Just like what they do with crystals and rocks and everything. Yeah. It, could do the, it could do the same thing. So items a lot of times can, you know, uh, be put out into the sun because, again, you know, it's one of uh, nature's ways of, uh, you know, simmering Bouncing down. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yep. I just want to reiterate again because someone just asked. Deanna Simpson was supposed to join us. Um, I don't know what happened. She had the link. I guess something came up and, and she couldn't be with us here. Maybe she'll join us eventually. But um, we're just going to move forward with, with and John. And if not, tonight. we're going to reschedule. And we'll reschedule with Deanna and hopefully John oh, absolutely. will make it absolutely. That one as well. I don't want to go into that case with John because even though he worked on it, obviously – um, and I heard great things from Deanna about that. I just don't want to tell one side of it. And oh, I thought that was her. And then have to go over that again. Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, we've got John. Believe me, John is a a wealth of paranormal. That's actually a really good question to ask John uh -oh. because his religious background. We did that thing at the Creeper don't, Gallery. Don't ask him about the pump. No, 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 no. I'm not going to ask him about a pump. Um me off but the crucifixion when it has the snake that's that's wrapped around it from the bottom going up do you know what that signifies and means uh it it depend it means several different things it's used very much in the medical field and everything uh you gotta remember the serpent is revered with uh certain ways of looking at it it's uh used in a very powerful thing we know saint michael you know, is shown many a times stamping out the snake. So here again, it, it depends on what the circumstances of it's being used for and yeah. what it is representing. Because it, it, it symbolizes a lot of different things. Yeah, because this, this was like a brass crucifix. statue yeah, type of thing. And it had the crucifix on the top. Mm -hmm. And then there was a pole and then... The and supposedly snake, yeah, the seven was fathers are, are attached to it. That I, mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And we were just wondering because like yeah, people said the same thing. Again, if it's just a pole and it just has a snake wrapped around it, it could be symbolizing, you know, uh, several things that it could have been represented or what it could have been used for. Yeah. So um, 50 years is a very long time to be in the field 
and again, a lot of people don't know that about you. They, you know, they know you from the Haunted Collector, and but again, John is the nephew of Ed and Lorraine Warren. We talked about this before in the early days of the paranormal, mm-hmm. and this is what again that I kind of gravitate towards because, you know, I grew up in the paranormal in the age of you know, people using modern modern equipment and all this mm-hmm. different stuff. But before that, when you would go in mm-hmm. anywhere, what did you have with you? When I actually started investigating, we had the cassette players at that point. Okay. With a microphone and attached or just? Built in. Okay. I had the uh, uh, one that was built uh, uh, built in. Actually, my uncle had one that had an external one too. I remember that. Yeah. But anyhow, um, at that time framing, that's what I would use, use the old camera, you know, uh, that we would uh, use to film, you know, and um, you would do that. Now, with the same token of using the cassette tapes and everything, I still very much, I I still use them to this day. A lot of times when I'm interviewing or something, I just use my cassette recorder. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, again, and... um, just record the interview and make sure that you, you have something that's documented or anything like that. But that, that was the basics of it. You just had your camera, your tape recorder, you know, you have uh, holy water with you. You'd have different things with you. You know, you would just sit around waiting to see if anything was going to happen or something was going to transpire. That's, you know, uh, how you would basically uh, do it. Yeah, now, but- you, you were very limited in, in that way. Again, this is why I go back to that because, you know, I know when we go in and we do what we do, um, if you don't catch any voices and really there are nothing experienced yet, the homeowner is saying, hey, mm-hmm. before you were here, believe me, the, the chair moved. Uh, we saw this. We saw that. Mm-hmm. What What is your process? when something like that occurs. I mean, you're believing what they're saying, obviously you're going in there, Mm -hmm. but you and I talked about like the modern age, people want to see a show. Some people, they want a paranormal group to come in. They invite 10 groups in just to see how they do it. But back then before it was mainstream, if you did involve yourself in a case and nothing happened for a night or two, what was your mindset? What was the process? It would, it would depend. It, you know, it would depend on, okay, if you already spent a night in there or you spent a couple of nights in a location and everything, I call it flatlining. Nothing happened whatsoever. You know, you leave, then the person calls and goes, you know, activity kicked back up again. Would, you know, again, go back sometimes to see what you can experience or get some, you know, a, 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 an EVP, as we call them today, right. you know, or record things or witness something. See, that was very important back in the day right. where my uncle always said you could somebody could tell you a million and one things but it's important that you witness something and you experience something because therefore you know you're you're a part of it at that point it's not yep. just a story so mm-hmm. I, that was very uh, beneficial because that's what my whole talk this past weekend was about was the you know back down to the roots back down to having experiences having you know, that time to, uh, you know, okay, did something occur? Did something happen? Did a breeze go by? Check it out. Was it, you know, something coming under a door? Is the air conditioning on? Looking for logical things, yep. you know, and then being able to rule things out. But when you couldn't rule it out, again, here here's an experience that could be taking place. I think a lot of people miss a lot of that stuff today. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Tremendous, tremendous amount of uh, paranormal activity just gets missed because if somebody doesn't record something or document something or get a cold spot, they ignore it. It's gone. Yeah. It's gonna, gone. I'm going to ask a question, but I'm going to actually rephrase it instead of doing a direct question. But with the field with haunted objects that are being brought out and, and have darkness attached to it, do you think uh, that bringing them out in public and just doing a spell or a binding is enough? It's a loaded question, Chris. It uh, is. That's why I changed the ramifications of this. Uh, yeah. Um, 
Because so um, many people are doing it. Yeah. Again, it, it, it's it's fashionable today to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm very guarded with a lot of those situations. I'm guarded, you know, on the way I move forward with a lot of that. Okay. I can go back 10, 12 years ago where I would take haunted items out. I have them inside their containers. You know, I didn't want people touching them or anything like that. And people say, well, you don't do that anymore. Yeah, because people don't listen. They end up touching the things. They open up the cases. <laughs> yeah, and if you can't stand right there or have four or five people yep. keeping an eye on everything, it makes me nervous because I don't want to be responsible for anybody picking up on something and them having issues. Right. So, therefore, you know, I, I'm a little bit more guarded with that. You know, I see what everybody's doing you know it's not that i just i don't disagree with a lot of it no. well, you know again, yeah i mean okay. it, it you know it is what it is so uh people taking items out people like it, experimenting and doing different things you know that's you know it, it is what it is <laughs> and i had to, i just wanted to change the person's direct question because i did that and just make it more of a general question yeah. instead of a direct well yeah. Here's a question for you. We were just talking about this today, and I want to know your thoughts on this because you've you've done way more than we've done. Um, my theory on buildings like uh, whatever, um, Conjuring, whatever, Amityville, whatever, um, on a building where let's say the structure, the building is 100 years old, mm -hmm. that for 60 years of that building, let's say three, four families lived in there, nothing. Mm -hmm. Yet the, the the seventh family moves in there and they get an experience like conjuring or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they leave and the next family flat lines, again. nothing. Now uh, my theory on this, and I want to hear yours as well, but I think like in the case of Deanna Simpson, and we're going to talk about that in another time. I think something about the people and their energy triggers something that may have been dormant basically within conduit. the building. Do, well, do you agree I, with that? I agree with that, and that's what I call a perfect storm. Okay. In the right place at the right time. Because, again, we de I, I've dealt with this many, many times. You know, uh, four or five families moved in. Nothing ever happened. Boom. One family moves in. All kinds of stuff happens. You know, then they you know could have everything done, taken care of. They move out. Next person moves in, and nothing happens whatsoever. Right. So that the Amity, Amity is a, a good example, but I mean, you know, it is a truth that the DeFeo family did have paranormal activity, right. but um, unfortunately, a lot of that never came to the forefront, probably never will, you know, and then the Lutches moved in. So again, um, uh, it, it, looking at a lot of the different scenarios and looking at the things again, now do do I think that Kathy and George moved in there without knowing about all the murders or everything like that? No, I don't buy no that. No I way. never did buy that. They would no lived way. right in Long Island, so no way. Yeah. So again, it, it's the fact of um, these things that occur, these things that happen. Um, I do honestly believe, you know, uh, a couple of the different families that had moved in afterwards did not have any paranormal activity right. i honestly believe that i do but, but going back to that that could happen anywhere at any time based on that theory correct you you could move into a space and for whatever reason the energy there or the quote-unquote spirits there if they don't agree with you and your energy or whatever you could set off that bomb Right. Oh, yeah. At oh, various yeah. degrees, it may be a calm, nice experience, or it could be the opposite where, mm -hmm. holy crap, there's stuff. All hell's breaking loose, literally. And, and it is the, the family or the dynamic or the people triggering that sort of thing. That's why, even along those same lines, that we've come across a lot of cases where one person in the home is seeing, hearing, experiencing, yet the husband sleeps right next door in the bed. Mm -hmm. You know, the kids are right in the room next to them and nothing. Yeah. Very but common. I also, yeah. I also believe that where there's a haunted location, haunted grounds, a haunted item, I believe that a person could be haunted. I know well, you don't, I, but I do. Oh, no. There's haunted people. 
There, there, there's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. Because you could deal with an individual that can move from house to house to house right. and they have paranormal activity. Therefore, you know, we, you can rule out the, you know, okay, you lived in five houses. In all five houses, you've had paranormal activity. 90% of the time, I would say it's the individual that's causing the activity to occur and it's not the, the house they're living in. So you're saying that the, the person is sort of the beacon or the person has an attachment? Not an attachment. The person has whatever you want. Not John. What, what his opinion right. is on that? They're haunted people. Are they a beacon for spirits, or are they attached? Well, to usually, spirits? no. Yeah, uh, usually, what you you find with a lot of it, a lot of times, with these types of individuals, you could refer to it as them being a beacon, but they're actually really sensitive people. They pick right. up on spirit, thus you know, uh, just causing paranormal activity to occur and happen continuously. So again, it, a lot of times it is just people that are more in tune to that realm. And again, you know, spirit will attract to people like that. So that uh, that's not an unusual. No, I believe that. Again, it makes more sense to me that way rather than a person... Being haunted being like an object? Haunted, no, meaning that they carry this attachment with them wherever they go, I could see more the other side of that where, like you said, there's sort of an open channel all the time. I believe that that's Because there aren't like mediums the same way. They, well, they yeah, kind of open but there's also that. what I believe another that that there's like a generational thing that yeah. goes with kind of like a psychic medium where that goes down the line of the family. There's this generational thing that, that could be happening. Oh, that, that's very, very common. An extremely common thing. I do believe that uh, it's an inherited uh, uh, gift, if you will. Well, a lot of people call it a curse. <laughs> they don't like the fact that, they, you know, but don't you, you talk to them, you'll find out it goes back generation, 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 you know, where uh, they were gifted and grandma was a witch or grandma, you know, was a seer or something like that. You'll hear about that. And uh, again, you know, sometimes I say, well, you know, was your grandmother a witch or something, you know, or practice something? How did you know that? I go, I'm <laughs> asking you a simple question. I said, because a lot of times that's just inherited just like anything else. And the, the way I came up with coming to a conclusion like that, I don't think I'm the first person to ever do it. But, you know, people inherit all kinds of things, high blood pressure, diabetes, all these other things. Why can't you inherit the, you know, the, the gift of uh, picking up on right. spirit. I, I kind of get, I agree with that. Yeah, I think that yeah. that's possible. Have you, I don't even know if we talked about this. Did you ever or do you work with mediums as part of your team? Oh, yeah. yeah a lot of them with, or, uh, or like, do you have a trusted I, like group of them or do you? Well, well, most of them I've been working with for years and years. Right. Uh, you know, um Again, it's it, it's the fact of, you know, that I started in the work, you know, working with mediums and psychics, you know, when, um, uh, you know, <clears throat> it was always a cool thing to go in and just watch Lorraine sit there and open up and start picking up on stuff. Because, you know, the bottom line was, you know, Lorraine was not going to run down to town hall and start looking up all kinds of information. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have this. We didn't have that. Yeah. So a lot of times when she would pick up on stuff and then, you know, when talking to people and things would get verified and stuff like that, that was so freaking cool. Yeah. That was cool. You know? So again, uh, to this day, do I still work with the uh, uh, people that are, you know, gifted and psychic? Absolutely. You you could tell when somebody's a, le a legit gifted person. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, you oh, could yeah. tell. We've um, again we we talked about this before. Um, we had a a case recently where I, I don't want to get too much into it because they may be watching or, but um, it was presented as paranormal, but it wasn't. There were obvious other issues going mm -hmm. on there, and um we did bring a medium with us because mm -hmm. we wanted that perspective. And even though we believe that there was nothing paranormal going on there, we still did our due diligence in the cleansing 
and Comfort. staging of the house because the person believed that it was mm -hmm. a real paranormal and was issue. tormented. And yeah. at the after we left, we got a message from the person saying, "I've never felt this secure. Things have calmed down." And and we tell people that all the time, and I'm sure you deal with that all the time. Oh, absolutely, yeah. When you kind of know that there's another issue, and mm -hmm. yet you've got to you've got to deal with the issue, which is somebody believes it, and someone mm -hmm. is in fear of it. Mm -hmm. So, what is your process as far as those kind of cases? Depends on the circumstances. Depends and on the, the people. people. Yeah, uh, that there's a lot of. Uh, things that I take into consideration when dealing with that, because John, again, we know, uh, you know, more so today than ever before. We have to be careful, you know, with uh, people's, you know, uh, you know, for a better way of me and anybody that knows me, you know, if somebody's ticky ticky tock tock, all right, <laughs> we got, we got, I got to look at that totally differently. Right. Then you know, okay, they're on all kinds of meds. This is going on. That's going on. They got an alcohol problem. That's not to say that something paranormal might not be happening. Yeah, that, yeah. But you ha you have to look at all of these things. Yeah. It, it you know before I would even move forward. Yeah. Because that's a lot. That's a lot of baggage. Yeah. That, that and, that's a lot happening there. And let's be honest, lockdown has really hyped those situations yeah. even higher now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. But that at that point, what again? What the point I was trying to make is that at that point you're engaged in the process. You can't just dump these people, even if you you yourself know there's nothing going on there as far as paranormal is concerned. You're now engaged with these people and what they're going through, so you have to see that. There's still a responsibility. Too the conclusion no matter what that conclusion is and sometimes it's not well that depends on how you're going to look at that you know we're not here to fix people no no that's not our job no no our job is to go in see what's happening right. are we no, dealing yeah. with something but supernatural I think is, is that not to do harm right you don't want to make it worse well again too you know whether you're looking at it from that perspective or not um, what bothers me a lot of times when, okay, all right, we'll just take a random scenario here. You know, this person's had 10 different paranormal groups in their house. They've had blessings. They've had clearings. They've had this, they've had that. Nothing's working. I don't buy it. I'm not buying it. Okay. For the simple fact, okay. I know how a lot of people operate. I know how people work. I know people try to help people, but you have a lot of people today that like that attention. Yep. Yes. They like to have people coming in. They want the, the, all the cameras and everything set up. You have to know where to draw the line. Yes. And you do have to walk away from situations yep. and you know, you can end up being the bad guy, but oh, well, you know, again, you know, don't feed the monster. Right, right. I was just going to say that. It's like feeding yeah. an addiction. Yeah, yeah. You have to know and, you know, take that step back and go, okay, you know, somebody could be, you know, getting tormented and I'm here just trying to help this person that just keeps doing this and doing this and doing this. Yeah. Okay, here's a, here's a good example. Um, re this is recent. Um uh, th uh, this particular person um, brought in several different groups and they had placed rocks around and had her cut her finger and drip blood on the rocks. So now, and this was a very religious woman. And, you know, again, I took the step back and I go, why did you do that? They told me to do it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this doesn't make any sense to me that you would do something to this degree. And she goes, you know, and, you know, she already had the priest in there two or three times. And I went, okay. I said, this is a good one. I said, this is, this is going to be a tough one. So I was like, okay, I already knew the priest that she was dealing with and talking to and everything. And I got on the phone and I called them and I said, I'm just going to give you a, a warning of what took place. I said, because I know. I'm telling you right now, she is not going to tell you she did that. Yeah. And, you know, so 
Anyway, she called him back over again. He already knew I was there. I told him there were several other paranormal groups. She never told him any of this took place or anything like that. And you know, then finally he confronted her on it. Good. And, you know, he goes, you know, this is valuable time. He said, you know, where you're bringing all these people in to do these different things and calling upon me. I said, you know, it, but anyhow, it, it's a perfect example of, of knowing when to walk away from something, knowing yeah. when to say something. But the, on the flip end of it, here's something else that is very prominent today. And I try to walk a thin, thin line is the best way I could put it. I know a lot of the paranormal groups. A lot of them are my personal friends and stuff. John, we, Johnny, we heard you were in on this case and you're no longer involved with it. We need to know what happened. Fine. Call them up. I'll explain, you know, what I did, what my findings were and blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, we're going to go in and help her. Okay, why did you call me then? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, fine. You want to go in there and, well... I don't know what you're going to do all that much different than what I... They're going to, they're going to make her put blood on rocks. <laughs> no, they want to walk where you walk so they can say That's that they were too. part of where you yeah, were. John couldn't do it, but we did it. So, it, it, well, and if they're able to, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah, all right. Then, you know, again, um, but it, it, it's just things like that today that I'm more guarded with. And I will pull back very quickly in scenarios like that. Yeah, that's and fine. That's understandable I, because that's a that's an abuse of of what, what real serious paranormal people that are out there doing the work who really mm -hmm. want to help people that are suffering. Yeah, but that's what that's not a true case. That's someone who's just using the system just to. That's the result of paranormal TV. It is. is that well, that that's what we deal with today. Yeah. Yeah. You know when you're dealing with cases or you know, getting involved with anything, it's, it's a different, you know, years ago, you know, even 10 years ago, people didn't want no one to know they had issues no. going on. Oh. Now it's like they stand out on the front porch and tell everybody. <laughs> so, you know, have a neon sign. Yeah, you know, so again, you ha it depends, which is okay, that's fine. I, I don't right. have anything against people going public with a lot of it, no, but it's a different world today from... You know, just uh, I, even I 10 years a, ago. I got a weird question for you. Uh, uh -oh. Again, for my, I like just picking your brain because I, I know what I think, but I always wonder what, what you think when it comes to, I won't mention any location. Let, let's say Acme Factory is one of the most haunted places in the United States, that it's on a list, right? And okay. People have been going to Acme Factory for 20, 30 years investigating it. Weekend after weekend, night after night, everybody has been there. It's a well-known place. Do you think that it's possible that over time of doing that so many times over and over, so many different people, that you will eventually kind of take that energy out of it? Or do you think that it'll just exist there forever and ever, no matter what? You know what I mean? Like fishing out a pond. If the spirits hear the same questions over and over again, day after day, week after week, year after year, do you think that eventually they're just like not as active or do you think it doesn't matter? I don't think it really matters okay. because I, my theory with a, um, okay, let's take the conjuring house. Okay. Good example. Um, I've, I've been in there several times. I was in there way back with ghost hunters back in the day. And, um, you know, is there a haunting there? Yes. But, you know, again, over the course of the years, they opened it up. They do all kinds of things. They have overnights and everything like that. you got a ton of people that are going to come in. More energy is going to come in. Thus, you're going to have an amplified haunting. But on the flip end of that, you can go there, you know, or any notoriously known haunted location. And you can, I say, I call it flatline. You yep. could have those points of time where things could just flatline yep. and you're not going to have anything happen. Yep. So that's not an unusual. But to look at a place that is notoriously haunted and, you know, continuously have people coming in and out, if the place wasn't haunted, it's going to be haunted. 
Okay. There, well, there, there's no ands, ifs, or buts about it from the amount of people going in, the communications, what people are bringing in. See, so that's but, a good theory, but too. That's, wait a minute. The, the flip side of that is that it's also been said, too, that sometimes what a paranormal group or people going in to do will bring in something darker that wasn't there. Oh, that, that, really that's that's a given. Oh, that's a given. That is a given. Because, you again, you have um, scenarios where people do a lot of different things, different practices. And people will do that. This is nothing new. You know, it's been going on now for many, many, many years. So when that occurs or that happens, to me, that is a given, especially where you have a place where people are continuously coming in. Yeah. You're going to have people go in and conjure. It's a, it's a given. But you bring up a good point because I never really thought of it that way. And now that makes a lot more sense to me that, like you said, if you just you're like you're you're fortifying and building upon what's already there by going in there then and constantly trying to communicate and open that door and open that door and open that door that you're really kind of maybe feeding whatever's there and keeping it active and building it up so that makes sense too i never really thought about it that way but that makes a lot oh, of sense I don't, I don't, to be honest with you with, with you know um, these locations you know, again, um, it's there's no way that they can't be haunted. Let me put it right. to you that way. Right. Too many people have been in them. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. got so much going on, sense. so many different things, and people, like I said, they, they do different things, practice different things, yeah. and you you you're gonna have mixed energy. That's why a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, I used to go in there and it was just Casper the ghost. Now it's dark in there, and I'll be yeah. like, you think? You think? Yeah. Of course it's going to be. And Carrie, was, uh, Carrie uh, posted on here that uh, with so many people going out and using Ouija boards in these places that, that she feels it's opening portals. Oh, that is, that, that's nothing compared to some of the stuff I hear people do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, believe me. Well, I've seen it and I watch it and I go, okay. Right. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. That's what Not you where do. you're thinking. Okay. <laughs> you know. I, went, I, I, I won't say the location. I won't say the people or anything, but I was at a gathering and um, it got it got quite interesting and in watching what they were doing, what doors they were opening up. And at one point, one of them turned and looked at me and they go, well, aren't you going to join the circle? And I'll go, what the hell are you smoking? <laughs> I said, why did you ever see me do anything like that? Yeah, I don't think anybody's ever for me to join any circle, and I don't think I would. You know, I laughed. I, I was laughing, but I was like, no, 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 no. I, I said, I'll just observe. I'll stay in the background and observe. Well, but, here's, um, the, here's the question again. I think I asked Chip Coffee this question. I don't know if I ever asked you, but again, this is my own personal curiosity. Um, do you think... Again, being just a paranormal investigator slash researcher, are there places that are off limits based on the things that happen there? Let's say like concentration camp, uh, 9-11. Are there places that you think will be off limits forever just based on the tragedy that happened there to people in the paranormal field? Or, and they should be, in your opinion. Yes and no. Okay, and I'll tell you why. You know, um, concentration camps, they, I have heard of people investigating them. Okay. I've heard of, that. yeah, I mean, not that, you know, it comes out to the forefront or anything. 9-11, right. we all know people that have been there and, you know, done EVPs and right. have done things of that nature. I'm more reserved with that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, again, with uh, um, as certain things, I will take a step back from, but then I realize and understand that other people are pushing it because they're trying to gain evidence, they're trying to find things out. So, you know, I try to comprehend and understand some of that stuff when people do it. Right. Um, and realize that a lot of times it's not so much disrespect that but people are trying to gain knowledge trying to gain information and Just, that also depends you know, on who's doing it and what their purpose is well that again too is you know 
uh, the, the, like I said, the big part of it. But um, uh, today we it's such a different world with um, a lot of the things in um, what people do that, yeah, you know. But yeah. you brought up a good point. It's a very fine line. And I've talked to people about this and, and I get there's an uncomfortable level when it comes to something. The difference between investigating a site where someone was murdered a hundred years ago when they were murdered yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's a, but really in reality, there is no difference. If you're thinking in terms of the paranormal and research and spirit communication, yeah. there is no difference between the two other than the, the sensitivity frame. towards but the yeah, family should member, be a sensitivity mm -hmm. the, the people and, that and the pain because I wouldn't want someone investigating where right. my daughter died. I'm just saying there should be a moral uh, I, compass, I mean, I guess, course. yeah, I, th I think that's what it comes but, down but to. But logically, there really is no difference. No, not on the science side of it. Right. Well, if you, you stop it, that guy, side of it. I mean, you know, Gettysburg, perfect right. example. I mean, that's considered sacred ground to a lot of individuals. A lot of people get upset with us paranormal people trampsing all over the grounds. Yeah. And, you know, and I understand that and I respect that. Yeah. You know, again, they, they, but again, when I'm uncomfortable with something, I won't do it. I don't care. I just won't do it. It's a personal it's a, choice. Yeah. So, but if somebody else is with me and they want to, they want to do that, that's on them. You know, that's, uh, you know, again, you ask me for my opinion, you know, yeah. well, John, will you go right in the middle of nine 11 there and start investigating? No, I've been asked to do it. And I just, you know, I just won't do it, but it. I know of other people that have. Do uh, it. Well, I always compare this, like I said to John, where would medical science be today if it weren't for those ones that were doing very morbid things back in their time and they were Correct. considered ghouls and that they yeah. were like inhuman and monsters. But mm -hmm. yet if they hadn't done it, then, you know, we wouldn't be mm -hmm. where we are on the scale of how many lives we can save and, and transplants and all the stuff that happens now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, you know, it, it depends on how you perceive things or, you know, uh, how you're looking at things and, uh, evaluating it right right well, that, your, uh, your moral compass i mean you have to have one you would think you know but some don't like like there's a guy we all know who he is i won't mention the guy's name but <laughs> he, he he's got a, a ghost box thingy and he will literally if a celebrity died today right now he'll literally try to communicate with them on video an hour from now and put it out there you know what i mean and I, we know who we're talking about, but I find that distasteful. But in his mind, hey, I'm doing the research. But maybe a hundred years from now, that turns out to be the breaking point of, oh my God, he uh, was the forefront of something uh, because we're we're putting humans' emotions into it too. Well, here, here's a good one for you. You know, the, it was very fashionable to. Uh, to bring photographers in to take pictures of the deceased. Yes. yes. It was very fashionable for them to stage the bodies. Yes. Especially we, so you start, and now we go, Ugh! Yeah. you know, yeah. at, at the fact of that, but that was, again, you know, tradition when they would do that, and yeah. but it was to be able to preserve the memory of them. Yeah. What about the culture that they dig up their dead every year and they dress them? You ever heard about that one? Well, look at the ones that just keep the deceased right there in the house. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah and they, <laughs> they revere them. They clean them up. They change their clothing. They're putting food out for them and everything. And, you know, again, uh, uh, with so many of the customs, it's uh, people view and look at it uh, uh, um, extremely weird. I mean, you know, I'm going to push the envelope a little bit here with, um, you know, being intimate with the dead. I mean, do you realize back in the Egyptian times and the Greeks and the Romans and everything, it was customary to be intimate for one last time. Oof, yeah. Ah, my God. Yeah. Now yeah. today, you end up going to jail for that. Oh, my so, God. But that, that was a very strong custom and belief that they practiced way back then. Wow. You know, we, we refer to it as necromancy. To, I mean, you know, and, uh, you know all kinds you. of crazy things today. But 
Yeah, so I, I was yeah. saying that I was hoping Deanna would be here because I knew he was going to mention pop organs and sex with dead people. <laughs> I just kind of had a feeling that sex with the gonna, dead. I, I kind of knew it. Well, he didn't so, want to yeah. disappoint you, John. <laughs> <laughs> I always do that to him. Somehow I bring that out of him. I don't know how. But that that's why I think I, you know, I always tell people when you get involved with a lot of these things, you know, it's important to research. Go, you know, yeah. go back years. And sometimes you get a you know good understanding uh, of some of the things and some of the practices and and you know, be open you, to all the different customs and the things that are out there. So the things that we are not open to, how can we understand it to help others if we're not aware of it? Yeah, but, correct. But we, a lot we, of people don't even know three quarters of this stuff. Right. They have no clue. No. Uh, we had talked about rituals, you and I. I, w- I won't say what the conversation was about, but. Um, there are people that dabble in kind of doing some kind of rituals to in order to communicate or connect with the deceased. And we were talking about certain circumstances and, and things that we had seen. And see, that kind of stuff freaks me out a little because I think that goes just a little bit further than what we do as regular paranormal investigators slash researchers. See, I think that's diving into an area where you really don't know when you're putting your hand in dark water and you don't know what's in there. You know what I mean? You don't know what's going to bite. Well, I agree. But it's, you know, again, something that, um, you know, you can almost, okay, good good example with that is the simple fact of uh, um, channeling. Right. You remember, when a person channels, they open themselves up to let spirit enter yeah. them. So, again, John, we're, mm-hmm. you know, looking at these things and trying to comprehend them. Yeah, remember, with Buddhist, you know, uh, uh, they will bring in what they refer to as their disciples to open up, to bring spirit in, to channel through. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, again, that's a custom to this day. And uh, uh, it's still practice. So, therefore, you know, uh, you have to look at things and some of the circumstances on why things are done. Now, just doing it randomly and, you know, somebody opens them up they, and they're flopping all over the floor and, <laughs> you know, just letting the spirit go in and out. No, I don't go for that crap. Right. I, don't, I don't even want to be involved with that. I, I just don't. You know, they, there's nothing... I'm there, running in the other direction. I, I've seen I, I, two channeling sessions, and you know Jane Darty. You've known oh, yeah. her for a long time. And yes. I witnessed her do it two times. And mm-hmm. I got to tell you what, it kind of freaked me out a little bit because mm-hmm. she, again, she wasn't flailing. She wasn't doing anything like that. But you could tell there was a change. And the things mm-hmm. that she was saying wasn't her you kind Mm -hmm. of knew that and that kind of freaked me out because again i'm a skeptic when it comes to a lot of this stuff Mm -hmm. and to think that people can embody the spirit and talk i I, I, that's that's far my experience with her doing it i didn't even know what channeling was all those years ago i didn't know what to do for her when she started screaming and moaning and she scared the bahibis out of me bahibis Certain circumstances where I've seen, well, uh, again, <clears throat> witnessing uh, just a, a person doing something like that during uh, a Santeria ceremony or a voodoo ceremony, it gets intense. Oh, man. And it, 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 it's, it's hardcore stuff to see happen, but I do honestly believe it occurs, it does happen, and it, it it can get pretty wild. Native American, I've seen it happen too, where there's certain ones that open up and let spirit channel through. So it, it to me, the, over the course of the years, I've just understand a lot of it. It just, I really wouldn't say accustomed uh, a, a, a to it, but I respect it. Yeah. yeah. It's the way I, of it, life for some. Yes, and I, I will never disrespect an individual no. for anything they practice or what they do because that's their choice. So, therefore, you know, I find you gain knowledge, 
you know, with uh, witnessing some of these things, it helps you to get a better understanding of some of these things and different cultures and different practices. Speaking of those along those lines, because I often think that, like you said, the Native Americans, you know, would use things to enhance their oh yeah, their yeah. connection with spirit. And I often wonder, again, is it the drugs making them do and say what they are? Or are, are they affecting the chemical balance in the brain to open up those parts of our brain that may make it easier? Have you ever tried anything along those lines as far as chemically to alter your state of mind or... Well, yeah, when I was a kid in my 70s, of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't paranormal. <laughs> I, I'm, I, but I'm, I'm talking along those like Native American lines. Like, no, you know I know. I, mean? I like, know. Purposely for the use of trying to get your head in a state of altered consciousness. I've, okay, I've been witness to it. I've been in ceremonies. Um, was I interested in smoking the peace pipe? No. Um, but watches it, watching it and witnessing it and the, you know, the transfiguration that could take place or, you know, them going into that channeling mode, you know, due to the fact of being altered, right. you know, and plus having the paranormal activity, yeah. you know, I believe it goes hand in hand. Yeah, I do too, in a way. And there's also where that some of them, some of the, the Indian natives would go into these huts, like they, a certain time. And I'm they would have you, to get tonight they made stranger <laughs> things. <laughs> Is that it that they would be sleep deprived, they'd be stuck out there right, food right, deprived, right. and then they'd have to sweat, and then their uh totem pole or their spirit animal would be revealed to them. But but that's what, yeah. what I'm saying. That's all yeah. part of it. Like sensory deprivation, sleep deprivation, um, like even like meditation in a way. You're mm -hmm. you're trying to alter what is your regular brain and reach a state because they don't want which... to be influenced by anything out here. Right. And I just wondered if John did any of that stuff to try to, even the deprivation, like sensory and all that. You've ever tried any of that? No, I have no interest. Really? In it. You never yeah. tried like the Gansfeld seeing what that would do no. for you? No, I don't think John's looking for the experience. So I'll tell you what you should try. <laughs> I, I, I did. I put the things over my eyes and I pumped white noise into my ears at a, yeah. a quote unquote and haunted building. And I heard voices in my head that normally aren't there. I, I have regular voices, but these were definitely something <laughs> else. <laughs> It's usually these my were, voice, John. These weren't in my own. Stop it, were, John. Stop it. <laughs> it probably was. No, I, again, I respect it. It's experiments. And I understand a lot of the experiments that everybody is doing. They're getting some phenomenal results with some of it. But I do not have an interest in that. For me. So Heather says her birthday is Saturday no, and wants to know if three of us could no. sing her happy birthday. No. You don't want me singing, Heather. <laughs> no. You don't want me singing either. So, what do you think? We got him on here doing cameos now? I think yeah. but I will say happy birthday, Heather. Happy, yes, birthday. happy birthday, Heather. John, I thank you so much for joining us, and I'm sorry that um, well, you know, well, uh, well, uh, we'll get it going where uh, we can pull it, where the both of us are on here, and, um, you know, again, uh, we'll get it arranged. I appreciate you. Wasn't a us, disappointment though, tonight, though. No, not at no. all. He never, he never is a disappointment. Never. I actually tricked him into doing this. Sienna was never <laughs> He knows what I do to him. John, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, guys. It was good to see you on. We'll be talking soon. Take right, care. Good night. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night, guys. Good seeing you. We'll see you soon.